So thank you for coming. I would like to introduce myself first. Um, my name is Anita Martin. I've been involved with this group. We got organized last winter. And I'm a Lake Mills resident who's been here since 2001. And I would like to have Sally introduce herself. She's also on our committee. Hi, I'm Sally Jones. I live over on Elm Point Road. Been there all my life, but I'm actually a resident of Illinois. My grandfather bought the place and I picked it up and hopefully get, plan on retiring up here because I love Lake Mills. And Sally actually has some farming background. Did you yes. want to say anything? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, born and raised on a farm and um, I went to United Airlines. I was their first female electrician, aircraft maintenance, and uh, somebody introduced me to a farmer, so went back to, on the farm and still worked for United, but uh, I still have acreage and it's mostly grain operation is what we run. We have a, a few other people here that we wanted to introduce and later on after we have our formal part of the meeting, um, if you have questions for them. One person is um, Steve Bliesner, who is the Director of Production for Daybreak Foods Creekwood Farms. And another person that I wanted to recognize is Ed Morse, who's with the Jefferson County um, Board of Supervisors. So, yes? Oh, and Kirk. Okay, I didn't, I didn't recognize you. I'm sorry. And Kirk, Kirk Lund, who is also um, a Lake Mills resident, correct? Yes. And, and as is Ed, and on the board of um, the Jefferson County Board of Supervisors. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't put the name with the face. So very good. Okay. Well, what we would like to do first is it's really important for us to get input from you. So we would like you to take a few minutes and fill out a confidential survey. It's important for us to get feedback and we've also um, and we've also recently distributed a similar survey to the um, Chamber of Commerce members in Lake Mill. So if anyone um, has seen something much like this, that, that is why. So we're really trying to get the input from the community because we know odors do impact sense of well-being. Um, there's public health aspects, which I think everybody's aware of. Business patron patronage. Um, we know that they affect property values in the town of Lake Mills. Um, we're concerned about the image of our, of our community and the desirability of the city and the town to visitors and potential new residents. So I think most of you are familiar a little bit with the background of our group, Citizens for a Better Environment. We'll just mention briefly that we got organized in uh, response to strong odors associated with um, a farming facility on Crossman Road off of County A. Um, we set up an odor action line and we've been getting um, good solid information from some of the people here which we appreciate since last May. And we've been working closely with the DNR, the EPA, and also an advocacy group called Midwest Environmental Advocates. Okay, Sally would like to talk a little bit about, just briefly. Some of the activities on um, Grossman Road, about 800 to 900,000 chickens are housed over there at Daybreak Foods in Creekwood Farms. Since 2008, Unlimited Renewables has been drying wet manure from the chickens and making fertilizer pellets from a portion of the chicken manure. Over the past year, we have tracked odor stemming from the UR production, which is more than three miles away. These facilities are located on the Rock River, or Rock Lake watershed, and the Rock River Basin. I know of um, another chicken farm, um, Pearl Valley Farms, which is down in Illinois, south of um, Freeport. I've contacted them. All their stuff is underground or all contained. There is no ponds around. There is no smell available for the neighbors. They are good stewards for all their neighbors, and they check with them frequently. So I was just wondering, why can't we have something like that? So I think most of you are aware that um, over the past couple of months, a number of things happened which prompted 
the Unlimited Renewables LLC company to um, apply for a new air permit. The air permit that they had from the DNR, um, it was not, based on what was happening with the tests and some other things, it was not clear that they could operate and still keep their emissions within the allowable level that the permit um, specified. So they did apply for a new permit. Um, and one of the things, I know a couple people have, have been here for meetings before, and since our January meeting, um, Jeff Kreuz, the engineering manager with Unlimited Renewables, was talking about a dust suppression hopper, a piece of equipment that he felt would be very helpful in reducing odors, and it has been what we've been told by the DNR, it has been installed sometime between our meeting in January and February 13th when the DNR made a staff visit. Um, and Sally will talk a little bit later about our odor reports for the last couple months, but we have not really seen an improvement. In fact, we've had higher numbers, which might be in part of by um, explained by the fact that more people are finding out about our odor line, but it, it has not been an improvement that we have seen in odors since that equipment was installed. So, um, a couple of other things that have been happening since our last meeting, um, and I was hoping Hope would be here because she very graciously had invited me to go um, to the Capitol um, with the Wisconsin Towns Association group in March, and they were addressing a number of concerns, and one of the things that we did is we did speak a little while with the staff member in Senator um, Scott Fitzgerald's office about our odor issues. Um, we left information for um, Joel Cleefish. <laughs> I'm saying that wrong, I know. He was not in, nor was his aide that day, and we did invite them to attend this meeting, but they were not able to. Um, and then Jim Shaw was at our last meeting in, in January, and he had invited us um, to speak at the Rock Lake Improvement Association Board, which I did, um, and then also I attended the Lake Mills Rotary Club and talked about the odor issues and how people can make reports. Yesterday I had an opportunity to testify or speak to the Wisconsin State uh, DNR Board. They do allow citizens to participate and um, they give you three minutes and they buzz you at 2.45 and you have to wrap it up. <laughs> um, so you can view that webcast, um, the presentation online um, and it, on number five of the handout it does indicate where that, where that is. Um, after I got a chance to speak, then and um, Patrick Stevens, who is the um, Division Administrator for Air Waste and Remediation and Redevelopment for the DNR, and also a Lake Mills resident, um, spoke afterwards to address some of the comments I made and then also to answer some of the questions that the board members had. So um, when you, if you do decide to look at the webcast, please watch what he has to say afterwards because there were some really good questions raised by the board. Um, we are planning, we've talked before about getting a website or a Facebook site and um, Ronnie Moore, I'm sorry, Monroe. I've got a lot going on in my mind right now and I'm having a hard time, so I apologize. Ronnie Monroe, who um, has been active with the pipeline issues, has volunteered to do our Facebook page for us to get that going in a prompt and quick way, which we really appreciate. So we'll be able to give you more information that way too. And thank you for also providing your email addresses so that we can keep you updated. Okay, so next Sally's going to talk a little bit about the odor reports. I want to thank you all for coming. This is a um, pretty important issue that we've got here. In January, there were 12 odor, odor reports, six different days out of that. And in those different days, six days, UR was processing manure. In February, 28 total odor reports, 27 about chicken feces smell were generated on 14 different days. That's half the days of the month. All the chicken odors reported were on days unlimited processed chicken and manure. March 
there were 34 odor reports in 31 days, all chicken feces related. That was done on 13 different days. All but one report on these days, um, we have U, UR was operational on, uh, except for one day. On three days this past month, we received five odor reports. March 5th, March 9th, and March 10th. I need to give an update on uh, status of the draft air permits. So we had fully thought that by the time we had this meeting, <laughs> Based on the information we were provided, we would have um, the draft permit, the proposed draft permit available and already analyzed by the engineer that we've hired so that we could talk about it and what are the strong points and the points that um, need to be addressed by the residents and things like that. We don't have it because it um, isn't available yet. Um, I was told today, a little bit before lunch, that uh, by the DNR that the draft air permit will probably be released for public comment next week. We were also told, um, which is good news, that they're, they're granting us a public hearing. So um, that will be an opportunity to speak about the content of the permit. And that is really a legal process. So for those that attend a public hearing and speak, that's um, something that's a permanent record and it's supposed to be considered, the comments are supposed to be considered by the DNR in um, finalizing or disallowing the, the permit. So it is a legal process. You can speak at the, at the hearing and if you're not able to attend, you can also write comments. And I did speak with um, Jonathan Wright, who is the engineer drafting the permit about the fact that last time when we had a permit hearing for the water permit back in December 2012, the timing was really hard for a lot of people to get to that meeting because it was, I think it was like at 10 or 10.30 in the morning on a weekday. So, you know, for people that commute and stuff, it was a problem. So he's going to see if we can have either an earlier morning one so that maybe people can go to the meeting and then go to work or a late afternoon one so that more people can attend. So as soon as we find that out, we will... Um, we will let you know. And I also failed to mention, and we need to thank the city of Lake Mills because um, they offered graciously to tape this meeting and um, webcast it for us, and they also will be broadcasting the public hearing as well. So for those that aren't able to attend, they can watch it and then maybe make um, some written comments. So the engineer that will be evaluating the draft permit for us is Steve Klafka. For those that were at the meeting in January, we talked a little bit about his background. He is actually a former DNR employee back from the 1980s, and he has a strong air um, air environmental background, and um, that's very helpful for us. Um, I think that was it on that. Um, okay, so if you would like to look at the documents as they get posted under number seven, we do have where online you can obtain them. We've also requested additional background um, because the DNR over the last couple, well, over the last month or two has gone and requested additional information pertaining to the application, which is, I guess, not an uncommon thing when companies submit uh, an air permit application. The DNR will then ask for more information or ask for additional information. So there's been some additional things back and forth. And um, the DNR said that they would provide that information for us so we can get a better understanding of whether the information that the DNR requested was ever truly submitted you know, in order to qualify for the um, permit. Okay. So, a, cu um, a couple of things really important for us to note, um, and I want to thank those that have made odor reports. It's kind of a pain in the hiney. 
I can't believe I said that in a public way and now it's going to be on TV, <laughs> to report odors, but it's really very important because we've been asked to provide objective data. And when people take the time to um, say where the odor is experienced and how strong it is and things like that, then we can track it. And I didn't bring it today, but I will be bringing it to the public hearing. We, we've um, made a map and we've um, shown with the direction of the wind um, very clearly that the odors that people are reporting go right back to, I mean, it's very graphic, it's very easy to see. So please do report. Um, and ideally, if you can report within 24 hours, that's better. I think one of the reasons is, sometimes we just forget and then you think, now was it Monday that this happened? Or was it, you know, if you wait till Thursday or Friday, which day was it? And it is kind of critical, especially when we start getting days where we get several um, reports. And I do want to mention in a positive um, note that on a few occasions when we've gotten a lot of reports, then they have investigated um, operations that they're doing and they have shut down. Um, in fact, on January 23rd, there was a shutdown because of an Mal a malfunction of some odor control equipment. And we had had, a, I think it was maybe five or six odor reports in, a, in about a 12 hour period or something prior to that. So sometimes it helps um, for them to then go investigate and, and shut down accordingly. And they did make some adjustments with their um, odor equipment and some of their chemicals that they're using to control the odors as a result of that shutdown. So, um, we do, our, we're still using our same phone number to call or text under number eight. We've had some funky things happening with Gmail, which I guess is not uncommon right now with other people having problems, but we're not using it. And that's one of the things I wanted to mention because when Sally was talking about all those reports for March, we, we lost them, I think. So, you know, 34 reports, we, we weren't getting emails for about a, a week. So who knows how many emails are lost somewhere. <laughs> There's somewhere out there, but so please, for the time being, if you will use my charter email address for order reports, I would really appreciate it. And also know that unless you um, ask or make it clear that you want your your name associated with the order report, we don't, we don't. Okay, but it is helpful for us if you say the street to give us a general vicinity. Is it the 800 block? You know, is it the court near such and such street? That'll narrow it down. And, you know, the more specific you can be, the better. Okay. Um, and please let, and I think a lot of you have already done this, but please talk with your um, city, county, town officials, the state officials about your concerns. And if you would, extend a personal invitation to them to the public hearing. That would be excellent. Um, I think, and maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think that um, public comment can be made by town officials and, and county officials as well. Am I correct on that to a public hearing? Do you guys know? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. I didn't, I, I didn't know. So they can come and listen and make a comment either publicly or privately and that's important as well. Um, we did have, and I was hoping Hope would be here because she did have some concerns one night when it was particularly bad, and she did call Unlimited Renewables, and she also called, I think, Daybreak Foods to let them know that there was an issue. So I think that holds weight as well. And if you subscribe to newspapers, um, you know, and that, if you can ask them to cover the public hearing, that would be great because I think the more people are aware, the better. Um, and Sally, you were going to talk a little bit about maybe gathering some statistics on tourism impact. Sorry, I got to back up for a minute. Um, I wanted to tell you about Brown County. They have addressed public health nuisance issues. They've got an ordinance now, ordinance number 38.01 from 2009 and it has to do with noxious odors in air pollution in their community. According to their ordinance, Brown County Health Department issues a citation when they receive three or more ver verifiable complaints from a single odor source within an eight hour period. The odor reports registered by residents in Lake Mills on March 5th, 
ninth, and 10th would fall into this category. There were actually five in those three days. Five each of the days. Five each of the days, excuse me. We need help with contacting people. You know, it could be uh, students or just anybody. If you start to get talking with others, um, trying to find out, you know, the stats, finding out is our other people. I know businesses and some others, they, they don't want to mention anything right now, you know, because it's going to affect their businesses. But I've been really pushing for tourism because I'm always talking Lake Mills up and bringing people up all the time. Um, we get a lot of money from the tourists. You know, you see them coming in, spend the whole day on the lake. You know, and they're buying food and going to the grocery store and, you know, there's a lot of events. So that would be great if we could get somebody to contact the hotels, the B&Bs, um, other businesses. How about the beach, you know? I'm going to get try to get a hold of some of the people that are running out, cottages and other things like that. And we've got a lot of people living in the trailer parks that are seasonal. And, uh, you know, they do bring in a lot of money. And I don't know if you remember um, from the previous meeting, 10 of the places around the plant right now, we're losing over $95,000 in tax revenue. That's because they reduced the value of the property over there because they have to smell all of that. So $95,000 for our township there's some money that we could be using. Thank you, Sally. We're also encouraging people to make the time to contact the health department, the Environmental Health Consortium, which is um, a coalition of, of sorts between um, health, health concerned parties in Jefferson County and there's a little crossover you know, between Watertown and, you know, with the Watertown, Jefferson County and Watertown area. Um, and then also the Wisconsin Bureau of Environmental and Occupational Health. Um, and if you do contact these individuals, we are asking that you forward copies of email correspondence. Phone calls are really powerful. We are asking for a follow-up email so that we can kind of keep track of, of um, how many contacts are being made to officials and what the response to those contacts is. And the same thing goes if you do choose to, to contact the um, facilities directly, unlimited renewables and or daybreak foods, um, if you can let us know that as well. Um, because sometimes that's not being communicated to us, so when we're counting up our total odor reports for the month, we may not have an accurate number. And we may not know that there's some odors coming from a specific area or whatever on a specific day. So if you can just let us know know that as well, it would be great. So I guess at this time, unless I have forgotten anything majorly, um, we would love to address questions. I'm not sure we will know the answers. <laughs> or um, if anyone is interested in making any comments or suggestions of some things that we could do or um, have anyone that has an idea. S Scott. Mm -hmm. Do you keep track of the days that you are in the process of the new world where you don't get any yeah, we, um, you know, the, the issue that we have right now is um, it's a little hard to know for sure when they're operating because um, they don't tell us in, in, in advance. Um, and they make an, a monthly report which usually comes out about six months, six months, six weeks to eight weeks after the month is over. And they'll say we were operating on these days. So um, we're, we're assuming that their operations are a certain time they may not be. Um, and we have been starting starting to track now um, on Saturdays and Sundays, for instance, they don't usually process. And, and um, the tracking we've done, we're not seeing the odors. So that would suggest that 
you know, that's a strong factor. And the other thing is there's been, there have been comments made that manure has been being spread. And I, I do want to mention that because manure is spread in this community. That is true. It's, it's a farming right to do that. Um, but just like when we have odor reports, we need to provide specifics and have objective information. They too, anyone who says there's manure spreading going on, we need to know where it is and when it is. Because if it's happening in two communities over, it's probably not going to be impacting the residents in our community. So um, that is, and you know, re as long as manure spreading is being done in accordance with the law, we, we really, you know, we're not trying to discourage people from spreading manure, they, but they need to follow the rules. But yes, we are tracking, tracking, we are finding on the days they're not operating, we're not finding any odors. Yes. Brenda. Yeah. Can you talk about um, the, the health effects that you found? I think it would be helpful for some of the people to hear some of that history. They mm -hmm. know how it, what it can be felt like. Okay. Um, you know, odors, the odors carry chemicals, okay? And um, some of the chemicals of concern include ammonia, which is the typical kind of you know, smell that we associate with urine, right? Um, there's also hydrogen sulfide, which is a strong respiratory irritant. Acetyl aldehyde, which is um, a weak carcinogen, a cancer-causing agent. Nitrates, which are associated with a number of health concerns, including cancer and also um, Oxygen and blue babies, is that? Blue baby. Blue baby blue syndrome. Um, and uh, and uh, for people that have um, breathing and respiratory problems, nitrates can be a problem. So those are some of the chemicals. And there are many others as well. Um, and the other thing that we wanted to mention, and it's really important, and we do have, if anyone's interested in sending a letter, we have some samples. You can either take it and sign it as is or, sen or create something on your own. But some of you may be aware that there are health rankings for counties in Wisconsin, and they've been done for the last couple of years. And so the 2014 health rankings just came out not long ago. And I was really surprised and alarmed to find out that Jefferson County w um, was ranked very poorly for physical environment. Um, we ranked 65 out of 72 counties with Milwaukee County at number 64. The air pollution particulate matter level that they indicated, and they've only been doing that as part of their testing for like, I think, two or three years, This is, you know, because this tracking is fairly new. It listed Jefferson County at 12.2. Now listen to this. The other five counties in the state that have a higher particulate matter are Waukesha at 12.3, Milwaukee at 12.3, Walworth, at 12.4, Racine at 12.5, and Kenosha at 12.6. The U.S. Census statistics say that Jefferson County's population is about 84,500 people. Waukesha County has, five, has four times the number of people. Milwaukee County has more than 11 times the number of people as in our county. And Racine County has more than double the number of residents we have. You would think that the counties that have more people would have more problems with particulate matter because that's related to pollution and a lot of the things that people do, you know, drive cars, this and that, you know. Um, so that's pretty alarming that we're so high. What's also of concern is in 2013, the air pollution particulate matter for our county was listed at 10.8. Now remember I said this past year was 12.2. So in light of this, when you look at the fact that the emissions from the facility include particulate matter, um, and they've applied for a new permit, and there's been question that they haven't really done the proper testing of the particulate matter, it's rather disturbing that, that, you know, um, that this is going on when <coughs> our county is not doing well with the air pollution, and something's causing it. And the only other rural, really rural county, I mean, there's rural aspects to Waukesha, but that's not as rural as we are. The only other rural county that's got a higher particulate is Walworth. You know, you would certainly think that areas with a lot of industry would have a higher particulate matter. 
So that's another area that we're very concerned about um, and that we hope when people make public comment they will address the particulate matter and it's important to address it because the EPA has just made some changes with their regulations to be um, stricter on that and there's been some disagreement between the EPA which covers an, um, a number of states, we're in region 5 and Wisconsin's DNR on this but um, we can definitely and we want to when we comment about the draft permit include information about that because by law Particulate matter has to be controlled. Um, it and the um, national government is getting more down on that than they had before. So I did actually send this letter with one or two changes to um, someone, <laughs> Susan Hedman. <laughs> sorry, Susan Hedman, who is um, the director, I believe, of um, Region Five of the EPA. And, you know, and asked for them to scrutinize the data that's included in the um, permit application and in the um, final proposed draft permit because the EPA can also weigh in on the proposed permits and we're going to really want to be contacting them and asking them to make a comment. They don't often do it, but they can do it. And since there's been a lot of controversy with a number of things that, and the way that they've been done, as far as regulating this particular um, process of the manure fertilizing um, the pellets, the chickadee doo doo production, it would be really good for EPA to weigh on, in on it and you know say what they have to say about about it. So, um, so thank you for those questions. Does anybody else have any other question or a comment? Yes, Ronnie. Percent of the manure goes into the, the chicken doo doo. What percent is spread? Okay, and I don't have the exact figures right now with me. It's a percentage, and you guys might know better, or you don't want to comment. I, it, um, it's you know there's there's the pullet birds, and then there's the uh, the layer um, birds, and a percentage of the manure is pelletized, and a percentage of it is composted. And what we've been told is um, it's sent to facilities m mainly in the Illinois area. That's what we've been told. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm assuming we're dealing with like a little bit slurry type. No? no? Okay, do you guys want to address it a little bit? I didn't bring the statistics, and I don't want to speak wrong. I speak for exact amount of but I do know that 100% of their but not all of it <coughs> our area okay. but but not all of it is pelletized okay not all of it is made into the yeah not all of it goes to unlimited renewables and but what does it all out of there? I, mean, I don't know if you put this. How does it come out of there? We have we have belted systems so that the manure is, is probably at its wettest fifty five percent moisture. Okay. And then and then they take it from there. And you take it to a different community. Maybe. No, I think I think they what Anita's are referring to is they may take a portion of it someplace else to finish its, its uh, process, but I would say the majority of it is, is, is manufactured. Here. So there's no no other product would ever come out of there in a truck or go anything else that you know here. That's right. no. We're talking about the manure, the wastewater is a different situation, right? The wastewater is a completely different situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's permitted differently too. There's a, a water permit and there's an, yeah. The, the wastewater, that's a good question. And uh, the wastewater is nothing more than, we run a breaking plant. So we break all, all the eggs that are produced. And at the end of the day, or throughout the day, it, it's all stainless steel food grade equipment, so it gets rinsed and washed. So the only, the only thing that's in the wastewater is potentially some, some egg residue. But the majority of it is just a great deal of water. We deal with a lot, a lot of water. That's why we put the aeration systems on there just to cycle it down. 
because uh, a couple of times a year the, the, the pond can do uh, a similar emergency in the lakes when the temperature changes, the bottom comes up. But we found by aerating all the time, keeps the bacteria alive in it. And Anita, Anita's been up to, to see the pond. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at the water that we actually use to irrigate with, it, it almost looks like it's been I will say that, you know, a couple of years ago there were problems with those egg lagoons. Um, and, and they made a lot of changes o over time. And um, when we were out there, I was out there with Christine Lillick of the DNR June 26th, and that didn't smell bad at all. But when they fired up the stacks, it was like somebody just went, you know, the manure stacks for, for drying the manure was like, whoa. I mean, you, you knew immediately. Yeah. Is there anything else in that stuff that's getting dried there, like other product besides the work? No. It's just the But obviously when um, manure is dried, you know, the concentration of water, it, it's changing. And, you know, because of the process, just like when you, you know, Like, you know, there's chemical changes. There's some chemical changes between the, the, you know, if you just had a piece of raw manure here as opposed to dried manure, you know, because they're actually raising the temperature of it and all that type of thing. So there is like a, a heating process of sorts, if you want, if you will. So there are some chemical changes. So you don't have to extend the layers. Uh, they, do, they do compost our mortality, but the ratio between Birds to manure is it, it, it's, it's, it's almost insignificant. So, so basically, your air mortality as you're extended. I have some chickens, and I know that they're not laying anymore. They're done. <laughs> well, when ours don't lay anymore, they, they all get trucked with some water. Okay. So that is. It. So here's the only ones that you're done that you're done with are is ones that kick the bucket. And when you're done, I guess when they're done laying and not laying anymore, you send those for to be food. Right? Correct. But so your mortality is basically the chickens that perish well. That's correct. Okay. And, and mm -hmm. are chicks, are you doing like the male chicks? And the no. When we when we get the when we get the chicks into the bullet bar, they already exist. Okay. Yes. And one of the things that we did learn is the manure content, the water content of the manure tends to be higher in the winter. So I think that that might be why sometimes there's more trouble with drying it, because it's starting out wetter. I don't know if I'm making a correct assumption. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. One more question. Mm -hmm. you think your, your water though that's going out of there, that would have no, um, that would have no manure in it at all. That's correct. That would not contribute to, to a nitrate level. And I, I will clarify, however, that, um, you know, they, um, not the Daybreak Foods production, but the Unlimited Renewables has had issues with um, manure dust on the roof and some runoff and things like that, whereas um, water needed to be pumped out of that site last year. And so they're still addressing those issues, and the, when the water was tested, um, the nitrate content was higher than um, desirable. Um, there were other things that were higher in it um, than, you know, bio biological materials were higher than they should have been. And that was one of the things that prompted the DNR to um, say that it's time for other things to be looked at a little more closely with their production. So um, we're interested in making sure that that aspects been taken care of um, so that there isn't potential for, for runoff of contaminated water. So, um, but that does not have to do with what they're doing. It's, it's what, how the manure is being stored and the, you know, dust and, and that type of thing with water and, um, and those things have been addressed, but we're not sure if they've been fully addressed by the DNR. So we are trying to get a handle on it. You know, I think I alluded to it last time when we had a meeting for those that were here, but the process of communication has changed a bit with DNR and our group. And um, things are a lot slower and when we, um, information that previously was uh, uh, allowed to be given to us freely is now 
under the auspices of having to fill out all kinds of requests with anywhere from six to ten DNR people reviewing them. So when we um, are requesting information, it takes usually between one to three weeks. So um, sometimes we don't have the information we would like as quickly as we would like, but we are trying to really stay on top of it and question things when we see them um, so that we can make sure that things are being done properly. And, you know, along with that, if people see things or are questioning things that seem not right, you know, it's good for us to look into it and make sure that it is right. Um, so if you notice something that does not seem correct, please do report it. Um, either report it to us or if, if it's a situation that's not related to that, but if manure is being spread and you're not sure if it should be spread somewhere, there's rules according to that. You can report it to Patricia Cicero, and I didn't bring her phone number, I don't have it handy, with Jefferson County or Mark Kane at the DNR because it depends on how the facility is is permitted as to whether it's under the county jurisdiction or whether it's under the DNR as far as who kind of monitors how the nutrient management is is being handled. So, but um, yeah, I mean, we, we shouldn't be unduly stunk out. <laughs> I guess that, you know, we should be able to have a comfortable, healthy environment. We shouldn't be worried about not wanting to go outside, you know, not wanting to um, have activities outside because it might be bad out. Um, going inside because it's too, you know, the other day we were walking, well I guess it was a few weeks ago now, and a couple was walking and they, you know, and it was a nice sunny day, it was like one of those days it was getting to be spring and it was, it was horrible, they go, we're just going back and going inside, you know, and we've had people make some pretty strong comments about how it's changed what they do, people, you know, hang, hang clothes out on the line and they come out smelling, you know, icky. I mean, you know, and we are encouraging people to get fresh air and many times, I think if everybody is truthful here, there's been times we've all had to close our windows, probably every single person in here because it's been too strong, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, those are some of the concerns. I mean, there's the concerns about the chemicals, but then it's the concerns about how it alters our activities. And that's one of the reasons that if we can get some feedback from people, that's really helpful. Who else has a question? Well, really, we are very appreciative that you came and that you shared information and that you filled out the survey. And we ask for you really to talk with other people and ask them, if you hear people making a comment about the odors, please ask them to report it. So if you're with a group of three people, you know, really, there should be at least two reports. And did everybody get a new card with the contact information? So our next step will be, as soon as we find out when the public hearing will be, we will send an email blast to everybody. Um, we were told that it's supposed to be published in the paper, but sometimes DNR is not always real consistent with that. <laughs> so we will make sure it gets into the paper and, um, and we will get some good, solid resident input. And then we'll also continue to work on the local level because the permits, while important and um, there's aspects that can be enforced by law. We also need to really work on the local level on this as well. Maybe, you know, maybe we, we look at an ordinance to address this. Maybe we look at, look at limiting um, activities similar to this type of thing in the future. Um, you know, there's lots of things that we can look at. Yes, Brenda. I like what she said about Brown County. Mm -hmm. That was a great idea. And if I'm not mistaken, um, was it Mike Foster or so I think I talked to you um, about the yeah, tonight's meeting and it, you said you were going to take this up as one of the topics? Yes, we're going to take it up as one of the topics. Um, it, it's just a matter of what we can do and what we can do. For us, 
Our biggest avenue would be getting in front of the Congress, the Senators, and things up at the State House. Uh, as far as ordinances, since the place is in the city jurisdiction, we really can't do an ordinance with the air because that's not our jurisdiction. But we have to, um, the, I really want the course back to get in front of whoever our representatives are. And that's, that's one thing we've talked about in the past, and uh, nobody's really taken any action on it yet, but we do need to. And we appreciate your willingness to be committed to it. You know, this is a really unique situation with this particular facility because it is located in the township, but when the winds are south-southwest, they really do blow into the city, um, and they also blow into the town. So I really would love to see some way that we could, as a cohesive community together, figure it out because um, it affects a lot of people. I mean, even if it, you're not in the in the immediate area on a particular day, if you're shopping downtown, I mean, we get a lot of people that are shopping that say they smell the odors, or they're down at the um, you know the concerts on the square in the summer, you know, and they can't enjoy it. You know, it's like that's not good. So it, it does not always just affect the people in the immediate um, plume, if you will. There are other people affected as well. Margie. Uh, the, is the town board um, concerned about the uh, devaluation of some of the properties? And would that somehow carry over into the city at some point? Mm -hmm. where it's a really good question. I, I failed to mention that, and I should have. Um, Hope Ustic? I can't, okay, you know who I mean. She invited um, me to speak, or our group to speak um, at the town board meeting, we did that. And we addressed some questions that the town supervisors had. And just before that, thanks to Sally, she had talked with Ron Jacobson, um, with Jacobson Appraisers, who does the appraisers, uh, appraisals for the city, I mean the town residents. And, um, and then we found out that the total, there's about 10 properties affected in the immediate area and the total value is 95,000 of a depreciation, which is huge, especially for town, our town is in need of money for road repair, et cetera. So I did check and, um, and I apologize because I don't have the name of the individual in front of me, so I don't want him to speak, but the person who does the appraisers, appraisals for our city, and. Uh, do you guys know who that would be? Anybody? Okay, I spoke with him. His first name is Nathan, and he, I can't remember if it's with Gar Gardner, or is it Gardner Appraisals? I'm not for sure, but I spoke with him and, and said, you know, um, has there been any depreciation of any of the um, homes or properties in the city? And he said, no. And, and what he did tell me is, um, he, know, he was aware that there were depreciations of properties in the township, he, he knew that, and he said um, unless he heard feedback from like some of the realtors that said that there was an issue that they couldn't sell properties um, that would be comparable to another property, be, you know, because of the odor issue, that then he wouldn't take any action. Well. Sorry, but you know, a realtor really is going to um, talk about this and have that affect their livelihood? I don't think so. That's kind of silly. So I don't know what action, and I'm not sure that is the action, but um, I, I know from feedback we've gotten from residents, they're scared sometimes to put their houses on the market because they just don't know if it, they're going to be showing them when it's bad. And how do you really, if you're a realtor, how do you really address that if someone's in town wants to see, and oh, it's a really bad week, you know? We can't show your house, you know? And we've had a few um, real estate people off the record that said they won't discuss this. So it is an issue, but they won't discuss this. Carol? Carol? and it now area where the community really works hard to promote and restore the downtown and to revive the good town to the downtown. One of the recent things that happened was that it would be like a secret shopper where community members from Lake Hills went to another community, the other community came here. When those folks 
folks were here, one of their comments was, as they were walking down the street, what is that odor in their community? Now, if, for instance, a business were to come to our community as an exploratory kind of research to find out if they would like to establish their business here, certainly that would impact their decision. And, and you're right with you, some of the band concerts, some of the, the farmers markets, you never know what's going to smell downtown, and it really does ruin the ambiance. Well, you're very right, and thank you so much for those comments and that information and feedback. You know, we've had people say that there's been contractors in town doing work in some of the downtown buildings. You know, people from out of the city that have gone holy buckets, you know, and um, that's not a good reflection on our community for outsiders. And people talk. And, you know, and one of the things that um, a resident told Sally, which I think is really important, and we mentioned it at the January meeting, but it stands to be repeated again, is that a gentleman said, you know, we're legendary Lake Mills. We pride ourselves on that. We don't want to be legendary for this horrible odor, you know. So I, I do think that together, you know, you know, maybe there's some more creative solutions, maybe, you know, I'm not sure, it's certainly not a simple situation. We're calling on the owners, and I say multiple because I guess there's one main owner, if I understand correctly, from that um, owns Daybreak Foods, Bill, Bill Ream. Um, but there are other part owners, and we're calling on them to also um, really work a little harder because the manure, the poop, is from the chickens at that facility. And I understand that the processing of the manure is not being done by the facility, but it's, you know, it, it's interrelated. Um, they have a contract, but it's interrelated. So I think going forward, we really want to ask for more attention to that. There's been good steps, but there really needs to be more attention. Um, we should not be suffering um, because there's a facility over there. And, and some days I do feel like we're suffering. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the other day we let the dog out just opening the backyard door. And I mean, it was just like a woof, you know, a big wind came in. It's just not good. And you know there's a lot of chemicals in there. I don't know that they fully have a good testing method of what chemicals are actually in there. That's one of my concerns. I think there could be better testing um, implemented, but we're just working with what we can, what we have, and what we can, and trying to go forward. But um, yeah, we we definitely don't want to have the work that we have put in to make this community good um, be sort of undermined by this odor issue. So. Yes, Brenda. Are the limited you know, folks that they invited to come tonight to? Um, you know, I did not, I did not specifically an ex extend an invitation this time around. Um, I don't know if they were aware of the meeting because they don't, the, the management you know does not live in Lake Mills. And that's, you know, I think that's part of, you know, we have, and I didn't, I didn't even mention that Chris came in. Chris Radel is, is, you know, in the management of Daybreak Foods too, and he's a community member. You know, coaches. I mean, he's invested in the community. I think that's part of um, the, the distancing of the community by not being a member of the community. I think doesn't do us a service because, you know, they they get to hear about it when they're at the baseball diamond, and they do, you know. Where, whereas. Um, I think most of the management folks are in Beaver Dam or quite a ways away. So I don't, and I don't know that they recreate here um, where they hang out here or whatever. So that is, that is true. Mm -hmm. well, I can tell you, John Weiss, the last meeting, he said, here's my number, call me if there is any problems. So I called him directly on his cell phone. He did not call me up. It was 10.30 at night, and I said to him, the odds of you getting here and having to smell the stench that I'm smelling, it could change by the time you're getting here. But he did not call me back. He did not email me back. And even though he says, you know, I'll, I'll come down and smell it to make sure. Thank you, Brenda, for that. And we have had that feedback from other yes. people as well. And perhaps it wouldn't be possible that day, but you know, a day or two later would be helpful to just acknowledge it. You know, the reporting system is a little tough because, you know, um, 
odors can we track the odors and they can change with you know the winds change within 20 minutes so an odor even if they were to come out and investigate which they have the odor can be legitimately gone I mean you know yourself you can go out in the backyard come back 10 minutes later and it sm smells differently and when we check the the winds can dramatically change in speed and direction and so that plume it goes sometimes other times it sticks around so but um, yeah we would expect um, callbacks yes we would expect callbacks that would be a good idea anybody else um, one little thing that I like eating out downtown a lot because then I don't have to cook because I do that at home all the time but uh, I've been there when the Badgers games people are coming through and they stop here in our town and I would you know car, uh, carps it's usually packed you know after a game people are going back to Milwaukee and they talk about you know you got to come here Come to Lake Mills, the really neat stuff, the, you know, all the arts and stuff we've got. But all it takes is one really bad day, you know, and like you know, if somebody complains about your food, it goes throughout everybody, you know. So we need to do something about this. And I'm a stockholder for the Packers. So um, it's nice to be up here with other fellow Packers and to go out and enjoy, you know, the games and stuff like that or somebody's house, but to smell this stuff, you know, it's not good. I think it's a really important point because, you know, people visiting, they don't have to come back again to spend their money here, we, you know, and I'm not saying we can't move out, and I've been tempted sometimes because of the smells, really, seriously, but um, we're more of a captive audience. But, you know, if you're coming and there's other places to go, if you had a really bad stink day, that's not a pleasant experience, you probably might not consider coming back again, you know. We've had feedback that there's been some days at the beach that have been quite bad. Um, and the feedback from visitors has been quite negative. And I mean, again, it's sad because we have a lot to offer for, you know, for people coming in. And so I think we can do better. We, um, and I think, you know, we have people committed to working on it. Everything and anything that you think you can do um, would be helpful because it takes a lot of people working together. Um, and, you know, We'll just continue to go forward. We'll address the permits. We'll continue to address if there's a problem that they're not complying with the permits. We'll be on them, you know. We'll be on them, we'll, you know. Um, we're not going away. And, um, and we appreciate everything that everybody's done. I don't know if that's helpful or not to hear this, but I do think we're making some very good progress. It's a long-standing problem without simple solutions, but I do feel that there's some progress in the right direction. And, um, and you all are helpful in that and can continue to help. Mainly one of the biggest ways you can help is to continue to report odors when you smell them.